D Labs asking the question, what do you do when your output tubes in your classic Fender amp are glowing cherry red, going warp drive, out of control? Let me show you. So that's what I have here, a Fender Twin Reverb that was shipped to me from a guy on the East Coast about three months ago and I'm just getting to it. Anyway, I'll take you through some easy step-by-step -step processes of how to isolate what the problem is without damaging your amp any further. Here's the heavy monster as I received it with all the tubes pulled, which is a good thing because if you leave them in, they're just going to get smashed in shipment. This thing looks pretty much all original. You can see it's got the power transformer here, choke, output transformer. He's a little bit bent to the right maybe from uh, shipping damage or possibly that's the way it was when it was built. I have not pulled the cap cover yet to inspect those. Here is your reverb output transformer and of course all of your nine pin sockets for those tubes. Let's flip it upside down and take a look at the boards. All right, here we are, underside. We'll start in the power supply area. So here's our power transformer, the lamp up there, your pots across the front. Down here are your output tubes. Now remember this amp does not have a rectifier tube. It's got diodes because it runs four big monster 6L6s and that's a lot of current to contend with. Here is the original eyelet board and unfortunately it's got these blue caps which I hate. They're ugly and they're always leaky. So that could possibly be what's going on with it. Because if you look right here, these are the 0.1 microfarad caps that go to the grids of the output tubes. And they're the old original crusty guys. So I'll be taking a look at them. So before I get into it, I always work on the amps in this position. I put them vertically, lean them up against my test bench here. By the way, this bench, I acquired it when I was out in California in an Air Force base and they were getting rid of a bunch of equipment and I saw this beautiful workbench and I told my wife, wouldn't that look great in our bedroom? Right, sweetie? Right. <laughs> Not really, but anyway, that's where it came from. I got it back around 1989 or so. And I used this thing in my shop in the garage at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And it's followed me everywhere since then. Anyway, back to the amp. So when you have this issue with your output tubes going flame red, that means a couple things. You either, number one, lost negative bias, which is probably what it is. Number two, those blue caps I showed you that I hate, those grid coupling caps, they could actually be leaking and putting positive voltage on the grids of those tubes and they'll go wild, right? Because they want negative voltage to keep them under control. And of course, the worst possible thing it could be is that your output transformer has shorted and the load that those tubes are looking for is not there anymore, right? So since there's no load in line with the tubes, they're just gonna say, how much current can I possibly pull away from that power supply and then I'm gonna get all red and hot and blow up. But I don't think it's that. So let's take a look. So here we go. We're going to check for the negative bias that comes off of this little pot over here. It's got a couple caps. There's a diode right there. And that negative bias goes through a couple 220K resistors if you don't have a master volume control, and I believe this one does. And then it goes to the grids of the output tubes, those four guys down there. Now you may say, well, that's easy. I'll just take a meter and I'll hook it up and flip it on. Well, a word of caution, okay? You could do that. However, you gotta remember, this amp does not have a rectifier tube. So even though I've got all the tubes pulled, right? When you turn this guy on, you're gonna have high voltage sitting right there on those strings of diodes in the area of about 500 volts DC, and you're gonna be right next to it measuring for negative bias, guess what could happen, right? So here's what I do. I take this resistor right, right here. This is about a 40K 20 watt resistor. And I'm gonna take one side of that, 
connector ground, and then this lead goes up to the high voltage. So what that's going to do is load the high voltage safely, and then when I turn off the amp, that resistor is going to dissipate that voltage so there's not a shock hazard waiting for you. Okay, we're ready for the test. Now I have the amp plugged into my Variac, all right? So you can't see it, but it's over here to my left. Now I'm going to bring it up slowly, and we're going to watch on this meter for negative voltage. Hopefully, you would see some negative voltage. I'm not going to go full power. There's no reason to. I'm looking to see that meter starting to deflect. So here we go. I'm up to about 50 volts. Do you see anything on that meter? No, you don't. All right. So to make sure what I told you about the high voltage is true, let's go higher on the meter. Let's move over here to the lead that has a resistor. Now look at there. See that? Now I'm going to take my high voltage back up. Look at there. You see that 200 volts on the meter? That's what you're exposed to whether there's tubes in here or not. That's why I've got the resistor and if you watch, well of course I took the probe off, but anyway, the resistor discharges the power supply so it's safe to work on. All right. So we know that we don't have negative voltage. So now I'm going to unplug the amp from my Variac. I'm going to make sure, once again, we don't have any voltage here. We don't. So that resistor did its job. Now I'm going to go back to that cap right there where we're looking for the negative voltage. Of course, there's no voltage there, right? I'm going to take my meter right. We're going to go to ohms. I'm on 2K ohms, and what do we got? 0 0.002. Let's go to 200 ohm scale. I got like 2 ohms. So, yep, that cap right there is shorted. And that is a common problem on these old amps. These old caps have done their job, but they dry out, and they leak, and eventually, bam, short. So let's yank that one, end this one. We'll put in some fresh caps on the negative bias circuit, and we'll bring her back up. So these original negative bias caps are 80 microfarad, 75 volts. There's two of them. So this guy comes off the diode, goes through this resistoroid, hits the next cap, through the pot, to your output tubes, right? So anyway, what I'm going to do is replace them with these new electrolytics. These are 100 microfarad at 200 volts. Close enough. They'll do a good job. Now the thing you have to keep in mind is when you put these in, watch the polarity. Remember, it's negative bias, so the positive lead of the cap will go to ground. Don't flip that around or you're going to get a big surprise. I'm just going to clip this guy out and you can see that the distance from this ground point to that pot was pretty short. So in this case, the little radio lead replacements are going to be nice. This one here, you know, is an axle type mount so the leads are a little bit further apart, but I'll still be able to put this guy in, roll this lead back and he'll lay right in place like this one did. There's the new caps, and of course the positives are going to ground, right? So here's the old crusters, they're out. Let's repeat what we did before, but we're going to go in backwards order. So first off, we had a short to ground on the cap, right? So I'm going to take my meter. You see that it works, right? Let's go up here. Open. Scale up, I'm at 20K, 200K. You're starting to see some resistance. That's natural. The cap's charging up. So that is a good sign. Now, take him up to the 200 volt DC range. Okay. Still got my little load resistoroid. Put him back on the high voltage. Then, take Mr. Plug He's back in the Variac. Hey, that rhymes. And we bring up my input voltage, and look at the meter. I am only at about 25 volts. 
You can see I've got negative 12 volts over there. So that's a good sign. Now let's bump her up. There's like 50 volts, right? So of course the next failure you could have is the bias pot itself could be open. So even though we're over here monitoring this and saying, man, it's great, let's put some tubes in, you could still have a problem. So let's make sure when I'm adjusting that we see that negative bias move, right? So we're going to take this, we're going to go to the grid of one of the output tubes. See, at 20 volts, adjust Mr. Pot. Yes, it adjusts. So now we know that the negative bias is doing its job here in the power supply. It's going through the pot and getting to the output tubes. So you can probably pretty safely assume that you could put in tubes and bias your amp. However, the thing I don't like still are these blue caps right there. Okay, Those are those dreaded blue junk caps. And I want to change them out before I get too excited. So I have some wonderful orange sprigs. So I'm going to change those out first. Then we'll think about putting tubes in it. So here's what I love about working on these amps. These parts are accessible right on the top of the board. If you're working on a circuit board, you would have to take the board loose, flip it upside down, go through a lot of torture just to get your parts out. But not on eyelet boards, right? That's what's very cool. And that's why I usually charge less to do this kind of work on an eyelet board versus a circuit board. Because a circuit board, I would spend two hours just taking it apart, flipping things around, putting on the parts, putting it back together, and hope I didn't miss something, right? But on this, you can see how quickly parts come out and how quickly they go back in. All right, so we got the big, beautiful orange spraggers in there. Now, the ones that I pulled out, obviously, no, I did not test them. And that's because I don't like them, all right? These things are just troublemakers. They're old, all right? This costs you like $1.50 for that little bit of assurance that these things are not leaking. So I pulled these out. You can see they look okay on this side, but look at this one. On the back side, I don't know if you can see it, there's a big old black mark on there. I'm guessing that somebody hit it with a soldering iron, but either way, that's not a good sign. So it's a good thing that these things are out. All right, remember I told you that his tubes were flaming hot. Here is one of his 6L6s under test on my Amplitrex AT1000. So you test it again, sure. Let's watch this. All right, look at there. No plate and no screen milliamps. Isn't that lovely? Let's see how she comes up. Almost done. Bam! Zero percent emissions. So this tube is nothing but a placeholder at this time. It will do absolutely nothing if you put it in your amp. These two seem to check okay, but they are not the same type as this, so I'm guessing that they were swapping in a few of them when all this was going wrong, right? So I'll check this one here, but I'll probably have to substitute in some used tubes that I have for the initial power up of this amp. All right, so while the uh, last tube is checking, and it looks like it actually has some current, all right, so that's a good sign. Looks like three of them will be usable for the test. I'm gonna get this amp ready to install the new tubes, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I have the setup back on here. I'm monitoring that negative voltage again. What I'm gonna do here, I gotta grab my screwdriver. I put it way over here, and look at there. It's a Dayton tweaker. Now, oh, isn't that cool, huh? That's gotta be top quality, people. Now I'm gonna bring up our voltage. There's a negative voltage. Before I put in the tubes, I'm gonna take Mr. Pot here. I'm gonna set him for maximum negative voltage. You see there, I'm going down. I'm take him right on up to 
with the maximum negative voltage I can get. And remember, I'm only running it at about 50 volts right now. That's why it's so low. But before I put in the tubes, I want to make sure that when I turn them on, they pull minimum current, and then I'll change the negative bias to get the current that I want. So I've got four output tubes installed, right? I ended up uh, putting in two that I had on hand that kind of matched the style of these two fender ones that were there. So I got two RCAs and two fenders. Now before I bring it up, there's one thing I like to do, which makes this process much easier, is as you can see, pin eight of these tubes have this little ground strap, right? So there's really no way to measure the current through the output tubes. So what I'm going to do is remove one of these and insert a 1 ohm resistor and I can use that as a shunt to watch the current through the output tubes when I adjust the bias. So let's do that. Alright, so I had a bit of a heart-stopping moment here. I was just telling Marcia. Alright, so you guys saw me do all this stuff, right? And it's like really cool, this amp's going to work. We're ready to measure the current, right? So I plugged it in, I brought it up, and I looked at my Variac, and it wasn't drawing any current. I was like, how can that be? I just had this power supply up, right? And I looked, none of the tube filaments were on. I'm like, no. So I take my meter, and I go over here on the lamp assembly, bring it up, zero volts. I was like, ah, oh. because you know, we had that one tube that was completely dead, and I thought, could it have blown the power transformer? So I pull out this fuse on the back, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, man, that looks like a big fuse. Well, it turns out it's a 14 amp fuse. I thought, no, this thing had a short, this dude blew it up, right? I went through all this, you guys are going to laugh at me for not checking that, right? So then I got the bright idea. I said, well, you know, this fuse doesn't look like a 3AG style. It looks shorter. So if you compare that, to a 3AG, there's a difference in length. I thought, well, maybe this thing's just not making good enough connection to pull the current for the filaments, but it's okay for the high voltage, right? So I take a new L Fuso, and put it in there, and then bring up the Ovariac. Boom! I got filament voltage, and I've got current flow on the Ovariac. So, you know what I really think I deserve right now after all that crap? Glass of wine. Yeah. And it's a fresh one. I don't even see lipstick marks like I usually see in the hotels. This is great. <laughs> or usually Marsha samples my wine. She's my taster. Because, you know, if something's wrong and it's a poison wine, she's going to take the hit for me. Right? No, I did sample huh? the wine. I just drank it out of the bottle. Lovely. I wish we could have caught that on video. All right. Let's go back and see if the single bias up. All right, here we go again. I'm bringing up the amp. I'm going to bring it up about half voltage like I did before. And now we're monitoring the current across my little shunt resistor going to one of the output tubes. So when the tubes start pulling current, that should start going up. All right? So I'm at about 60 volts there input. I'm just waiting for the good news. I'm not seeing any. Bring her up a little more. But I am pulling current. Approximately a third of an amp. Oh, look at there. Mr. Meter. Now remember, I cranked the negative bias all the way up to restrict the current going through those output tubes, right? So they shouldn't pull a whole lot of current at this point. And once again, I lost my screwdriver. You know, I really need to get organized. All right, here we go. New tweakity doo da. all right? I'm up to 100 volts. You can see we have 18 milliamps through one of the output tubes, right? So that's good. So I'm thinking it's safe at this point to go ahead and bring her up to full voltage. So there we are. I've got about 20 milliamps through that tube. So let's see if I could take it to 30 milliamps. 
There we go. Look at there. I can dial it right up. So I'm guessing that this amp is probably going to work. So let's hook up a scope like I always do, audio generator, and see what we get for an output off the amp. And you can see right there, I got D Lab's little quick dummy load hooked up to simulate a speaker. Always do that when you're working on amps, okay? Either put a dummy load on it or hook up a speaker to make your output transformer happy. All right, here we go, initial test. Got my audio generator hooked up. Still monitoring our bias, which is around 30 milliamps or so. Scope arena over there, and now you can see there's a bit of a noise floor on the amp, all right? So that's not a good thing. You see that little ripple there? I betcha we got bad filter caps. But anyway, at this point, I really don't care. I just want to see if it's working, right? So we're fired up. Audio generator is going into the vibrato channel. Let's bring up the volume. You can see, got us a signal. It looks pretty clean. The thing I don't like is this noise floor. So that'd be the next thing for me to investigate. But the good thing is, the amp is on, the tubes are biased, and they're not cherry red hot. So the cap cover is removed, and I was kind of surprised to see new caps, because we saw that little 60 cycle hum, right? So some of these, the connections don't appear to be the best, but they are soldered in. But one thing I found is very odd. I don't know what it is. See how there's green here? Well, look, there's like this goo down in here. I have no idea what that is. Kind of reminds me of uh, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, right? I mean, there's this weird green goo that's all over this area. So I need to clean that up, inspect these connections. But now my guess is, is that noise floor we're seeing is either terrible preamp tubes or more of those terrible blue caps underneath that I showed you. So as you can see when you're working on these old vintage amps one thing can lead to another. The objective was find out why the output tubes would not bias and they're glowing red hot out of control and now we know that was due to those negative bias caps being shorted. Okay, so that's fixed. Now the amp will bias and she'll conduct a signal from the input to the output. So that's a good thing. The noise floor issue is something I'll have to take on later. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if this amp's still here, maybe I'll show you that next. Anyway, this is D-Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this is good for you. And if you run into the situation, you'll have a pretty good idea of how to approach it. We'll see you.